Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a report that just came out called the State of the Climate in 2020. Okay, 2020, you say? Well, the actual report just came out um, about three weeks ago. So what they do is the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society compiles this extensive report each year on um, the significant weather and climate events that have occurred around the globe. This is a significant undertaking. And uh, it's, uh, so the report is 458 pages long and it was published online August 25th, 2021. It's put together by 530 authors from over 66, um, in about 66 different countries. Again, it's called State of the Climate in 2020, and it's chock full of information. And what I'd like to do in to start in this video and to probably continue into some others is to talk about some of the basically big picture items. There's a lot of good, there should be a lot of details, but first of all, I've got this, I've got this little guy here who wanted to just say hi. This is Shackleton the Explorer, and he's very restless. He's expect whenever he sees me now, he expects food. I have to feed him about double what I feed the other cats because uh, this guy seems to always be, be hungry. Come on, look at the camera. Look, there you go. <laughs> so anyway, this is Shackleton the Explorer, and I'll have to feed him again soon. So... There's uh, the sections in this report are global climate, global oceans. There's a whole section on the tropics, um, which I'll do videos on because the tropics is often neglected. The Arctic, the Antarctica and Southern Ocean region. And also there's a whole section on regional climates, which they don't normally do. So basically some of the highlights from the abstract, um, the average uh, level of CO2 was 412.5 parts per million in 2020, for 2020, and that's that's average, like I said, it's not at a specific time. That's an increase of 2.5 parts per million over 2019. It's the highest um, in 800,000 years. And this happened in spite of human CO2 emissions in 2020 actually dropping by 6 to 7% globally due to the COVID pandemic. This drop of 6 to 7% is within, it's less than the interannual variability that is driven by the terrestrial um, sinks, the biosphere sinks, the ocean sinks, etc. So it's not really, it's hard to pick that number out. I guess what it's saying is that the 2.5 ppm rise in 2020 over 2019 would have been 6 or 7% higher had we not um, had COVID. The oceans, interestingly, the ocean uptake of carbon was about 3 petagrams of carbon. That number, that's the highest it's been in the 39-year record. It's actually 30% higher than the 1999 to 2019 average. So this is interesting. The oceans took up significantly more carbon last year. Um, and it's a good job they did. Um, I have to look at the reasons for that. The annual global surface temperature over the land and oceans was in the top three in 2020. Europe baked, basically. There were 17 countries that recorded their highest annual mean temperatures. It was the warmest year on record for Europe. Uh, Japan, Mexico, many other places uh, were had extremely hot temperatures. The U.S. Um, in Death Valley, in a place called Furnace Creek, sounds super hot, it reached 54.4 degrees Celsius on August 16th in, in 2020, and it was the hottest temperature on Earth since 1931, although there's some controversy over the 1931 number. 
north of 60 degrees in the Arctic, if you define the Arctic as north of 60, the annual mean temperature was 2.1 degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 average. Now, in, in weather and meteorology, um, people talk about the climatological average, and it's usually the most recent or a recent 30-year uh, average. So that's why, you know, 1981 to 2010 is the average taken in this report. So 2.1 degrees uh, above the average in that time frame, above the climatological average. June 20th, um, it reached 38 degrees Celsius in Berkoyansk, Russia, which is at 67.6 degrees north. That's incredible Arctic temperatures. As we know, the Arctic warming is at least four to five times greater than the global average warming, mostly because of all of the feedback effects. The Arctic is losing uh, snow cover over the land in the spring. It's losing sea ice. There's a lot more dark areas exposed, so it's absorbing lots of energy. Antarctica, an atmospheric river, which is a long, narrow region in the atmosphere that transports heat and moisture in large quantities, warmed up um, significant parts of Antarctica uh, in 2020. This year, it seems to be the opposite effect. There's been periods when Antarctica, the uh, continent is about three, four degrees Celsius colder than normal, you know, this, this year in, in certain places. Um, but February 6th, in a station called Esperon, Esperanzo Station in Antarctica, the temperature actually reached 18.3 degrees Celsius. This sets a new record for the highest Antarctic, Antarctica temperature. It beat the previous record by 1.1 degrees Celsius. The shortly around that time, Antarctica had the largest late summer surface melt event in the 43 year record. So there was huge surface melting in the Arctic. And in fact, uh, it hit 50% of the Antarctica Peninsula. So if you look on the map and you see the Antarctica Peninsula, which is the most no northward um, poking part of the continent, that had a very, had a huge summer surface melt with melt ponds, etc. Antarctic sea ice shifted to being slightly above average, which was the first time in five years. You know, Arctic in the Arctic, the Arctic sea ice hit a mid mid-March maximum um, with only with 70% of it being first year sea ice. The thick ice, ice, you know, that's generally four years old or or older has decreased 86% in the Arctic since 1985. Only 2% of the total Arctic sea ice in 2020 was th thick ice. The minimum extent reached the second smallest year behind 2012. And I'll compare that to this year's minimum very soon, which we're hitting or we have hit, um, you know, this is about the time of year mid-September when we have the minimum of sea ice in, in the Arctic. The northern sea route in the Arctic in 2020 was open for two and a half months. You know, from basically from late July to mid-October, usually it's only open for one month. Glaciers around the world lost mass. They lost mass for the 33rd year. Permafrost, uh, significant thaw. There was record high temperatures, not just in the Arctic, but also at many high um, elevation um, mountain locations. You know, um, Northern Hemisphere lakes froze three years, three days later than normal, and they thawed 5.5 days earlier. So they basically, in Finland, uh, lake ice declined uh, the duration of lake ice on lakes in Finland was 42 days shorter 
Generally in the Northern Hemisphere, it was about eight, nine days uh, less ice duration. So the ice is still going on the lakes, but it's lasting long, shorter and shorter. There's more, uh, the lakes are taking longer to freeze um, and they're thawing earlier, shortening the season on both ends. Snow melt in Siberia, basically in 2020, there was the lowest June snow cover over the 54 year record. Now, sea ice, Arctic sea ice decline, causing the Arctic uh, warming because it's exposing darker ocean underneath is only one part of the equation. Remember that the snow melt over the land in the Arctic in the spring months is increasing. So there's less and less snow. So there are darker surfaces in the land underneath. And that's also contributing greatly to the um, Arctic temperature amplification, the great warming of the Arctic compared to the global, um, global uh, temperature rise. Hydrology is messed up. Droughts in the Middle East, no precipitation in October at all. Um, in South America, uh, Bolivia, Paraguay, South Brazil, you know, uh, drought, mega drought in Chile, which is running for the 11th year. Um, if you remember the COP uh, last year was, or, or in 2019, was supposed to be in Santiago, Chile, but there were droughts and, you know, food shortages and stuff and very, um, you know, the conference had to be moved to Madrid in the in sort of the last moment. Um, the U.S. West, of course, has been you know, in tremendous drought, uh, fire in the Western, wildfires in the Western US in, was three times higher than the 2003 to 2010 mean. Arctic, the number of fires in the Arctic over the permafrost, uh, burning um, tundra under the ground. Um, record level of carbon was emitted uh, to the atmosphere. Um, in fact, it was up by about 34% um higher a higher a record higher than previous uh years by 34 percent especially in arctic asia tropics the amazon had the most fire since 2012. Uh, remember 2012 was a very very warm year and that was the year that we set a record for minimum amount of sea ice left in september um in the 2020 southwest asia monsoon it was the wettest monsoon since 1981. In China, the Yangtze River, the Huaihe River Valleys, they had the most rain since the start of the records in 1961. And that affected 45.5 million people uh, in, in China. You know, many of them lost their livelihoods, uh, you know, their homes were flooded and things like that. There was widespread desert locust infestations um, in the equatorial regions, East Africa, places like that, because there were heavy rains, which caused lots of breeding. And then there were favorable winds, which moved these locust swarms across many African countries like Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, Uganda, South Sudan, North Tanzania, destroyed thousands of kilometers of cropland and pasture land one million people needed food aid in Ethiopia alone because that food was destroyed. Those crops were destroyed by the locusts. The ocean heat content hit a record high. The sea surface temperatures were the third highest. 2016 and 2019 were hotter. 84% of the ocean surface had at least one marine heat wave. There was a major marine heat wave in the Northeast Pacific in September you know, call it the blob, if you like, that it was six times Alaska's size. The global mean sea level rise was a record high for the ninth consecutive year, about 3.5 millimeters per year. Greenland was about 0.8 millimeters of that. Greenland had 293 gigatons of ice melt. There were 102 named tropical storms um, in the Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere combined, that exceeds the eight, 1981 to 2010 average, which was about 85. 
Northern Atlantic had a record 30 tropical cyclones, which beat the 28 in 2005. Um, the, uh, there, there were some super typhoons like Goni, which hit the Philippines. Somalia had uh, cyclones um, and in a town in Somalia, Basana had 128 millimeters of rain in 24 hours. The annual average rainfall there is 100 millimeters. So they got a year's rainfall in one hour, basically. The lower troposphere temperature, uh, you know, was equal to the 26th uh, highest record on record. That's the lower troposphere, not just at the surface. The stratospheric temperature continued to decline as we expect with, uh, you know, greenhouse gas warming. The stratospheric polar vortexes were very strong and stable and there were low ozone levels. You know, Antarctica had the 12th largest ozone hole. So I'll continue in some other videos, but this is just some of the highlights from this report. And uh, I'm going to talk, I'm going to show a lot, some of the key figures and stuff. Like I say, the report is 458 pages long. Um, and um, it's quite extensive. It's got lots of good information. And I'll discuss some of the key figures, etc. Um, in subsequent videos. Thank you for listening. And please consider donating to support my work at my website, uh, paulbeckwith.net. Uh, Thanks again. Bye for now.